Hey, I'm Jen. I'm Natalie. And this is Vodka Culture. Where we sit around, drink vodka, and talk about culture. Cheers. Cheers. All right. Take so, us off, girl. Um, I guess, you know, this not well thought out. We just kind of came together and said, let's do this. Just a little disclaimer here. We are both been under the weather, so yeah. hopefully we can pull ourselves together well enough to have a coherent discussion of this. We just started drinking. Yeah, exactly. Well, so well, Natalie just started drinking. <laughs> and she hasn't drank enough for this. That's not if she yeah. <laughs> so Clearly. So, but uh, yes, um, continue, yes. So, you know, we were kind of talking about what we should discuss today, and um, this morning at work, I actually had a rather interesting conversation that kind of spawned out of, is that the correct word, spawned, came out of nowhere. Uh, we were joking around a few of my coworkers, and we were discussing which like generation we were from, like if we were millennials, because I was like adamant, don't call me a millennial. I'm a generation Y. I remember the internet, before, I remember time before the internet, I used a card catalog. We were just goofing off, people were like, no, you are a millennial. And You're kind so of, not a millennial. Yeah, we were just arguing, you know, kind of... Um, back and forth with each other and it was it was fun actually it's you know what you do on Friday mornings at work in the office and so one of my coworkers who is older than I am and she said just off the cuff randomly you know she's not a bad person I want to preface with that but just off the cuff said well I I'm I remember a time because I was saying I remember using the card catalog in school and she goes well I remember a time when we still said the pledge of allegiance at school and I said, okay. And she's like, and when we sang song, we sang Christmas songs, we still said the Bible verses. And I, again, being on my sarcastic, witty self, was like, well, that's inappropriate. And she went off this rant about how that's the problem with us, everybody today, we're too sensitive, and we get offended so easily. And I said, well, have you read the Constitution? And then the conversation kind of tapered off. We're at work. We're not going to have a whole conversation about religion and politics at work. So that was kind of the end of that. However, I, we kind of were talking about what to talk about, and I said, well, maybe we could talk mm -hmm. about religion in school, the Pledge of Allegiance, singing Christmas songs in school, things of that nature. So well, here we are, yes, present day, yes. <laughs> present time. I do remember growing up saying the Pledge of Allegiance in school. Up until the third grade, I remember. I also remember doing Christmas pageants or what have you. But we sang Christmas songs, Kwanzaa songs, and Hanukkah songs. Those did you see, did. see where I grew up? <coughs> I, I was in. Sorry. In, in, that's right. <laughs> uh, I was in Northwest Iowa, a small school district. We did secular. Okay. We did, we did secular songs. I mean, well, a, a lot of. We did like, oh, here comes a. You know, yeah, I can't. I can't remember the songs now. Well, the songs we did were like seriously. The Christmas songs were like Jingle Bells and yes, here come, um, here some Santa Claus. Like it wasn't actually like it wasn't like oh come all ye faithful. It was right. all Santa Claus or Frosty the Snowman. And then yes. we did dreidel, dreidel, dreidel. And you know? I, I wish we'd done dreidel, dreidel, dreidel. But, then but we did I some think, I don't songs. even know if there. I don't even think there were Jews in Spencer, Iowa, well, and there, there might no, have been one black kid. Well, that's and that's because we had black people. But then what happened is when you're seven years old, then all the white kids just assume the black kids celebrated Kwanzaa. And they're like, no, we live in America where we celebrate yeah. Christmas, fool. Um, uh, they I didn't teach anything about it. They just we mm -hmm. just did the songs. And you know, I have fond memories of doing Christmas recitals. I do. At the same time, though, I think about kids who are not Christian being in schools where this other religion or tropes of this other religion are being forced upon them. If the answer is, well, if you won't sing these songs, then I guess you just can't <coughs> participate. Mm -hmm. And I think that's unfair. I think that's exclusionary. Nevertheless, it's still, it's something that's very hard for me to reconcile. On the one hand, I'm very much about inclusion. On the other hand, Christmas recitals are fun. And, and I, you know, and I think it's, I think it's, you know, because I think we're going to get to a point where we're kind of against it. But playing, you know, onto what you're saying, yes, I enjoyed it too. But again, I want to emphasize that we did not sing Relig we didn't sing songs about Jesus. We didn't sing songs about... It was... We would have concerts. We'd sing songs that would be, you know... Jingle Bells. And Frosty and the Snowman. And Santa Claus. Yeah, and all that. And again, we sang stuff. songs about... You know, and there was nobody in my school, I guarantee you, that celebrated Kwanzaa. There might have been a few that celebrated Hanukkah. I mean, I don't know. I know that I grew up as a Christian. I went to church with my mom and my, my sister. I was baptized. I was confirmed. I am now an atheist. I wouldn't necessarily be offended with those songs anymore, whether or not we should. And that's, that's you know, again, 
I don't know really where I'm at at that with those types of songs. I just have an issue more with indoctrinating people into the religious religious aspect of it. Like, you know, telling the mm-hmm. story about Jesus being born and that he was the son of God. That would, that would have, if I had children's school, I would have a problem with that. That would mm-hmm. bother me. Not just because I'm an atheist, but because I don't think that's appropriate to teach in school. Yeah, it's, uh, I'm... So I don't send my kids, wouldn't send my kids to private school. I'm incredibly without an opinion on, I mean, I have, I have strong feelings on several different fronts with respect to this issue, and I don't know where I land on it. I'm, I'm open to hearing what other people think about this, but here's something that I think is really important for us to acknowledge. There are the Christians who say that by taking this stuff out of schools, it's an attack on Christianity, or it's an attack on, it's a violation of their religious freedom. That, and that's the thing I have issue with. When you say that taking religion out of school is an attack on religion, you're saying that you think, by and large, you're saying that you think it's wrong for Christianity to not be in schools. It should be the because, default. You think because it be the default. You bet your ass if it were Islam or Judaism or Hinduism or anything else that we're being taught, you would say, hell no. But since it's your religion that's being nixed out, you feel like it's a personal attack. And the hypocrisy in that is really disturbing to me. I think what the bigger, I honestly, you know, when we say take out, that's the problem, my opinion, to begin with, that it was ever there to begin with. I mean, we, and I, I wrote a whole blog post about like, I called it the real war on Christmas, only because... A battle was fought in the Revolutionary War on Christmas Day, but that's a whole different story. But once America won their independence from Britain, we actually didn't celebrate Christmas as a, as a nation because it was considered un-American. It wasn't even a national holiday. I'll have to check this, I think, for like 1840. So for like, you know, the first almost 100 years, we did not recognize it even as a holiday. I'm sure people celebrated it in their own way. But if you think about certain things, like it wasn't, you know, Santa Claus and Christmas trees are not exactly anything to do about Jesus or no, God. No, I mean, so. and just as, an, as a side note, and this has been widely discussed, Jesus was not born in December. He was born in the spring. What happened was the early Christian church trying to establish itself by running tantamount to pagan tradition. And so there, there, were the, there was the winter solstice, <coughs> Christian church decided to celebrate the birth of Christ concurrent with that to to give would-be converts a celebration that they could have in lieu of the winter solstice. You know, the whole thing with the, Christ, the, the Christmas tree is actually a, an appropriation of pagan Paganism. tradition. Yeah. yeah. Here's, here's what I contend. I don't have a problem with schools celebrating Christmas. I think they should also then celebrate Kwanzaa and Hanukkah, and the other celebrations or or religious observances of various faith groups, because this is an important part of making (coughs) us an intelligent culture that's sensitive to one another's cultures, you know. That that was really that was really poorly said. No, I know. Um, no, I know exactly yeah. what you're trying to say. You, if yeah. you're gonna, if, here's your choice. If you're, you have a, if you're gonna celebrate one, you have to or you have to teach them all, or you don't get to do them all. It's exactly. only because not only because one of the reasons because we are a nation that's supposed to be celebrating, and I say supposed to in quotations, so we don't always do that. Supposed to be celebrating our diversity. We're supposed to be about a country of immigrants, unless you're a Native American. We all are a country of people who've come together and we've. Kind of, it's a conglomerate of all traditions from all countries we've put together. Hanging Christmas lights on Christmas trees is one, you know, aspect from a country. And having St. you know, Nick or Santa Claus is another aspect from another country. And celebrating, you know, all of these are aspects from different, you know, ethnic groups who came to the United States at one point or another. And we're supposed to celebrate that. And I don't want to diffuse it. I I think it's important that we, we celebrate those differences and celebrate everybody's in, you know, their individual celebrations. I think that's important as a nation because that's who we are. But it's not okay then to exclude some right. in favor of what you believe because yours yep. is more important. And that to me is just... Well, okay. that's 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 the religious hypocrisy we're talking about. I mean, you, you can't claim your first right amendments while also decrying that of others. You can't be like, oh, if Christianity isn't in schools, it's an attack on Christianity. But as soon as anything about Islam comes up, 
you're going to attack that and call that it <laughs> somehow a yeah. threat to your faith. I mean, it is, you, you don't get to have – the First both Amendment ways. is the First Amendment. You don't get to have it both ways. So either we allow religion in schools or it's no religion in schools. We have to be egalitarian about it because – that's just the way the world works. That's the way our constitution works. And I don't know if it's necessarily, and this goes actually, we talked a lot about this in our last episode of our podcast, if you're following along, but that also goes along with age, wisdom, and critical thinking. I'm not sure it's appropriate to t teach a six-year-old or do this with them because they're not able to understand completely and comprehend. I think it's something that maybe when you're 12, 13, you start, that's kind of where I am. Like, mm -hmm. I think you need to be a little bit older to be able to, so you're not be, and I don't know, again, I'm not a parent, I'm not a teacher, so I don't want to even begin to suggest what other people should do, but I think it may be something where it takes, you, it takes understanding, and you have to be at a point where you can actually comprehend what they're talking about. Yeah, and it's, it's hard, I, you know, I actually am a little disappointed that we don't say the Pledge of Allegiance in a school, in school anymore. I well, mean, I don't, I don't, because... I, and you and I have talked about this privately before. Like, I believe in in, in monotheism or wh whatever it is. The fact of the matter is these religions throughout the world that are often at the forefront of this debate do believe in mono do practice monotheism. And God is God is God by whatever name. And I don't think that there's anything inherently offensive in saying, in God we trust. But I except don't. for the atheists. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, to me, the, the Pledge of Allegiance isn't so much offensive as far as religious goes, you know, the God part. To me, it's more, I don't pledge allegiance to any flag. We don't live in a totalitarian gov government. That bothers okay. me. See, so now I'm, that's where, now you and I are definitely going to yes, disagree that's, on that. That's where I, I don't pledge allegiance to any flag. I'm sorry, I don't. I, I love my country and I will stand up for it as far, you know, and I will want to make it better. But I'm not going to pledge myself. That's, again, I know we differ there, but that is not a religious argument with me. I wanted to say that we don't yeah, I know, continue yeah, yeah, that, and, to me. Uh, I just would never pledge allegiance to any flag. And and for me, I recognize it as a symbolic behavior saying that I am an American and I pledge allegiance to my country. And we'll leave it at that. Yeah, no, you know, I, like, I don't think you're wrong yeah. for that. And I don't, I, that's just my opinion. I don't think anybody, I don't think that's a, that's not, I choose, pick my battles. And to me, that's not a serious right. enough one yeah. for me to even care what other people, that's yeah. just my personal belief. And if anybody else believes the other way, I'm okay with that. I don't have, that's not an argument I'm willing to have with yeah. anybody. I just wanted to clarify that it wasn't a religious issue. I yes. The God part kind of, I'm not, I don't trust in a God, but. Well, you don't really get behind the whole nationalism kind of thing, right? I mean, I definitely will. So, yeah, I mean, I guess I don't ever think of one country being better than another. If that's, I don't, I don't consider, I think a lot, I know it really, what kind of gets me is a lot of people will say, I'm an American. Like that's, and you, and that didn't take a whole lot of work. And no offense to them, you just happened to be born on this soil. How does that make you any better than somebody who happened to be born in Syria or happened to be born in France well, or happened to be born it's, in Haiti? It's, it's, it's right, but at the same time, like, you can be an American who just doesn't give a shit about <coughs> your country. Oh, that's not me. Or you could be an American who is very proud to be an American and proud of your country and want to see the best things come of it. And then there's, you know, all the spaces in between. Well, I'm proud of my, I want it to be better. I want to, obviously, I wouldn't be doing all the advocating and talking about it and trying to fight for it to be better if I didn't have a belief in it, if I didn't believe in, mm -hmm. in what it could be. I mean, I believe we were the first country that had a constitution that said, all men are created. That had never been written down before, that all men were created equal. I do want to get to that point where it's true. I do believe, I do, I mean, U.S. history is one of my favorite subjects. So to say that I don't care, I definitely am all USA. I just, and here's the hypocrisy in me. If I'm in another country and I get kidnapped by some foreign police, bet your ass I'm going to use the thing, I'm an American, get yeah. me out of here. So I'm not, mm -hmm. I don't want to pretend like I'm all like, perf like that's not my point. It just sometimes it gets a little bit on my skin when I hear people that are, you know, chanting USA and I'm an American and F you. And I'm like, well, to be honest, you just well, happen to be yeah, born in Missouri. I, How yeah. does it make you any better than somebody who happened to be born somewhere else? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not a fan um, of American exceptionalism. That's, that's a way better way to put it. Way to, that's um, a great way I, to put it. I, I don't like that. I believe that. I don't think this uh, is the promised land, a sacred place. You know, I, 
I, I look back to that pilot episode mm-hmm. of the newsroom with Jeff Daniels doing that amazing monologue written by Aaron Sorkin about how America is not the best country in the world. And he rattled off all these stats about America's position, America's ranking mm-hmm. on, you know, in various different matters. And, I mean, he, and then he says, it sure used to be, and it could yeah. be, and this is what we need. And, yeah. Yes. And so, so to, to the people who are the American exceptionalists who just say, USA, USA, America is the greatest country in the world. It's like you, you're being blind to the fact that in our pride and just resting on our laurels this kind of really got off top of religion yes yeah, that's good that's what happens when you we've, we've been resting on our laurels and just assuming that we would continue to be the greatest country in the world meanwhile we have been surpassed by many other countries blah 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 and I, let's get back to talking about what's well, going that, on with religion I'm gonna, I'm gonna in finish that thought real quick i think that's the reason that so many people are so passionate about the things that are happening in this country and want to make it better. It's not because we've written off America. It's because we know the potential. And philosophically, it should be the greatest country in the world. What we stand for, what we say we stand for, should be bar none the best. It should be. But it's not, mm-hmm. and we have work to do. End of that. I just want yes. to cap it with that. So back to religion. There is a falsity that America was founded as a Christian nation. It Wrong. was, in fact, not the Founding Fathers, there are multiple documents wherein the Founding Fathers have said, as we are not a Christian nation, Mm -hmm. or as we are not founded on any religious principle, anyone who tells you that America is a Christian nation is lying to you. And has not done enough research and read enough books. Were the Founding Fathers Christians? (coughs) Yes, they were. They were Christians. Did they found this country on Christian principles? Sure. Well, was this established as a Christian nation? Absolutely not. Well, when you say Christian principles, we're talking about spiritual human rights principles. Well, but see, and that again is coming from an atheist. Why I have the problem that those are Christian principles? Because to me, they're just those are again what you said. What was what was the, what was the you, phrase you just used that was so perfect? spiritual universal spiritual principles and to me that's a better to me you know well, being kind and loving each other and being respectful and be, that's but yeah again, and no. i think i think that's what we need to be clear about nevertheless it is really fun to have six-year-old children standing on a stage singing ho 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 you yeah. know it's fun we have to be a more inclusive society welcome mom you're part of the podcast now Oh, she's no, she's. I don't make her all nervous. Yeah, I'll pass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think you want to be a part of this. It's about religion in schools. I think they should say the Pledge of Allegiance. She's already That's said That's why I said that. Yeah. So, yeah. All the way, and that doesn't have anything to do with religion. And we said that. We exactly. said that too. Maybe yeah. you actually could be on the podcast. What our nation is. No, don't you dare. We covered that too. It's <laughs> not a Christian. <laughs> Love you, mom. Too. <laughs> That's great. If more people could be trusted to project those, you know, Christian values or spiritual values, whatever you call them, and be nice and love thy neighbor and respect each other, then we could probably be okay doing more religious things in school. What happens though is that the people get angry that you know other religions are there, and people get angry and yes. say this. And when it becomes that, then you, it's almost one of those things when you're a kid, like. Then fine, nobody gets anything. Go yes. your time out because I absolutely agree with you in that. Like, if promulgation of your religion is through adversity to other religions, it's like, you know what? No, nobody gets yeah. to have cookies. Go sit in the corner, <laughs> yeah. you know? Our discussion of our religious faiths have to be about those core principles. Mm-hmm. And we all could benefit from that. I yep. mean, really. So let's go now. I think let's, this is a good time to transverse. So we're talking about religion in school and the teachings. Now, I think there's a difference also between kids singing Christmas songs and them teaching religious values. You get into, should we teach creationism in science class? Uh, things that don't have any fact base. Should we teach that in school? And when it comes to health, do we teach religious teachings in that? Yep. I think that so, becomes a bigger issue than what s- songs people are singing. When I was in junior <coughs> high, my science class taught evolution. But then it also set aside a little chunk of time to say, there are also people who believe in creative intelligence. 
talk about what that argument is. And they gave time to it. I think that was their attempt to try to reconcile it and make parents happy or whatever. Um, I didn't remember that at all. I don't think we didn't have that. At well, all. I this was in Wisconsin. No, I'm, no, I'm, not, I'm just trying to think if we did it. I, I, I don't. It was. Ever I mean, it was. That. It was one class because there's not really much more to teach yeah. than one class. No, I, I, on that. I honestly, I'm just trying to look back, and I don't. We didn't do that where I went to school up through high school. And <coughs> and and this is a, a com- <coughs> for whatever it's worth. This this is a complete digression from the topic at hand. Um, we don't do that here. <laughs> this whole podcast is an aggression. <laughs> like a seventy five percent. I told you we should just called it Friday Night Chats with Jen and Natalie. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, the majority of this is just digressions. Um, and I've said this before. Um, I personally find no necessary incompatibility incompatibility between monotheistic faith and science. Because I find God do in the. Do you want to describe real quick monotheistic faith, real quick? Just oh, in absolutely. Case. Monotheism says that there is one God, versus, uh, let's say, native faiths that have like the God of rain, the God of war, the God of you know, and <coughs> uh, and then Wiccanism is the other thing I can think of that has uh, a polytheistic faith. Uh, or Hinduism, I think, is also mm-hmm. polytheistic. Um, I I believe in monotheism. At the same time, though, I also believe that cultures that practice polytheism, uh, that's just a conceptualization of individual phenomenon they have experienced without tying it back to a universal source. I actually don't find anything particularly incompatible between monotheism and polytheism. Mm -hmm. I think that polytheism takes that one God concept and breaks it down into individual components. And then for me with monotheism, where I really find it is in, in the atom, in the laws of physics, in the way the periodic table of elements is arranged. That, that, that they just came to somehow figure that out. Mm-hmm. And those blank spaces that originally existed have become filled with our, perfectly filled with our discovery of new chemicals. I find God in the Big Bang. And we, yeah, we kind of discussed this on our science yeah. episode. Yeah. Yep. I, would, I just want to say here, I know I, is, this is something I struggle with because on one part in me who is, I'm, which some people may not believe, I have a really strong part of me that just wants to please everybody or wants to be, okay, let's just do this. And so part of me really feels strongly that as long as you're teaching both, then I'm okay with it. They can make their own choice. However, there is still a part of me that's like, but no, the Constitution says we, the state and the government or right. the state and religion don't mix. I really struggle with that internally because I'm like, well, who are, let's, if as everybody's happy and we're teaching everything, I do have a problem with teaching creation and not teaching evolution. I have a problem oh, with that. absolutely. But I struggle so much with this fight inside of me that just says, fine, let's just teach it all and make everybody happy. And, but then that part of me goes, no, that's not what it's about. We're not here to make everybody happy. We need to teach facts and we need to teach – because that's what is better for people to understand things. And then they can in mm-hmm. their, on you know their own time have their own faith because faith is not – I'm sorry, the whole definition of faith is – Without logic. That's why right. it's called faith. You have to have faith to believe in something. Be- belief no in things not seen. Exactly. So there is no logic behind it. So I struggle with that so much because, again, like I said, mm-hmm. part of me, I'm repeating myself, but part of me just wants, all right, let's just do it all. If we teach it all, there's no problem. But part of me is like, but no, that's not the point. What, what, what I so, liked about this science class was that we were taught the science and the evidence for evolution. We were taught about the experiment with the I. Sorry, we did not prepare for this, so I don't have the names available to me. The two guys who did the primordial soup experiment, where they said you take a primordial soup, introduce electricity, boom, you have life. That that's what we were taught, and then the class also acknowledged. Well, there's this other thought about how life originated, Um, and I think in keeping with that, we should probably talk about how. Other religions view life originating. 
See, that, that's that's going to be an issue of contention. And that becomes a really long lesson. Don't you think? It becomes a really long every lesson. Single but here's the fact of the matter. Isn't that, that you should learn at church? I'm here, sorry, I don't. Here's the hard part. Education is publicly funded. By everybody. By and large. And when we talk about education initiatives, they have to be backed by various bodies of the politic and, yeah, sometimes special interest groups. And then aside from that, there are other political initiatives where in order to get them through Congress, somewhere on the Republican side will be like, all but right, that's a whole we'll, other problem. Then they, yes. they, they should and, and then, fuck up. But, 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 we, like, we, but this, it's something that's worth acknowledging. Oh, I agree, yes. That sometimes to get important initiatives through Congress, you have to politicians have to sign off on like, okay, we'll do this with creationism education. Or where we see this more prevalently is in sex education. Yeah, and see, but that, again, but see, my, that's my point. This is where, and I, I am always wary about using this argument because I don't think it applies. I think it's way overused. But in my opinion, religion in school is a snowball effect. What happens, you te teaching one thing, and then you just keep going. And before you know it, it becomes dangerous. Not because I believe religion, well, I don't think on the, I don't think what they're it could start off as being dangerous, but when you start to only teach that, when things once you because they give a mouse mm -hmm. a cookie, they want a glass of milk, and before you know it, you're tell you're teaching kids things that are not fact based at all, and they're leaving school and they don't understand how things are we work. Have enough to get us through the night. I don't know. <laughs> we chose to talk about religion. We probably should have done that with a, with not enough vodka. We, we, we probably should have bought another bottle of vodka. Um, I am. Very perturbed by the sex education. Yeah, by if you want to call it that. I have okay, let's do this. I had a very good sex education. I remember I had it in. I was in. I had a good sex. My freshman gym. year of high school, it was only one quarter. I remember my freshman year of high school, you had one quarter gym, one quarter health, and then in sophomore year, you had yep. a whole semester of gym. So I only had one quarter of health class. But my health class, I remember, taught everything sex education from eating disorders to you know, get the full, you know, back to all bacteria type stuff, mm -hmm. health and whatever. And then on to, you know, sex education. We talked about STDs. We talked about birth control. We talked about rapes. We talked about abortion. Wow. We talked wow. about, and my, my health teacher was not there the next year. I don't know what that means. We talked about sexual harassment. <laughs> we talked about everything. And it was, and there was like three kids in my class and I, the four of us who talked, I remember we talked the most as well as classes you just adamantly remember. And it was so interesting we talked about smoking. We talked about drugs. Everything you can sure. think of, we talked about. And I remember a lot of those things still. And I was 15. So we're talking seven, I'm going to have to date myself, 17 years later. And I remember a lot of what I learned. I did not one time leave my classroom and go, I'm about to go smoke a pack of cigarettes. I'm about to go get high. I'm going to do some ecstasy. And I'm going to have sex with a condom because now I know how to. <laughs> Never. Not one time. Um, and it's not because I'm perfect. It's because that's not what sex education teaches. It doesn't teach you how to get away with having sex and be okay. That's not what it teaches yeah. you. My experience with my sex ed class was... And domestic abuse. Sorry, I thought we also talked about domestic abuse. So your your sex ed class sounded... It was health Sounds class, like it was... Yes, it was... Okay. It sounds like it was very thorough yes <laughs> uh, awesome. i uh, i think that's awesome what i remember of my sex ed class or health ed class whatever you call it, it this this it this, was this, this was a this was a sex ed class that i had <laughs> we you know talked about <coughs> how babies are made <laughs> which is important you mean a stork didn't bring you yeah dude ejaculates inside a woman boom baby that's that's how life works uh, so if you don't want that to happen, you should well, either. I took health class, so I knew that ahead of time. Otherwise, I'd be scarred right now. <laughs> so if you don't want that to happen, you should either wear a condom or use other birth control or remain abstinent. Mm -hmm. That was presented to us very clearly, oh, and it was in my class too. By the way, we talked yeah. about STDs. We talked about birth, and she said, and we that was very strongly put out there, like. This is the percentage rate of condoms. This is the percentage of mm -hmm. birth control. You have a choice. And we, again, we talked about abortion and rape and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But it was still, at the end of the day, a very strong message that the only way to avoid all of these things is to not have sex. However, she was smart enough to realize she's talking to 16 and 17-year-olds and we're not going to just be like, all right, cool, we ain't going to have sex. Let's just 
do not. And like I think I think that's that's the problem with abstinence only education. It's because the people who are promoting abstinence only education have the benefit of wisdom, mm -hmm. the benefit of years of experience. That's an amazing way of putting it. That's yeah. That makes yes exactly. I think that abstinence-only education is motivated by people, not only religious people, but people who have the benefit of age, experience, and wisdom to know that, yeah, you do these things, and then when you get older, you say, gosh, I, would, I wish I wouldn't have done them. Yeah. But the thing is, you don't have that conception when you're 16 years old. You're going to do what you do because it feels like love. Or it feels like what it's Or because you're 16, so screw you and I'm not going to listen to you and I'm going to do what right. I want because I know everything. I'm 16. We've all been there. Don't act like and we haven't. The idea, <coughs> the idea that telling a kid, you should not have sex, period, is going to be satisfactory. Like they're actually going to listen to you. Do you, I mean, do you? Are, are, are you aware of how rebellious 16... It, it, is, it is a psychological stage of development that at this age, we rebel to establish our own identity and independence. The, the episode of... The pilot episode of The West Wing, where, the, where they're talking, and that one, the guy from the church says, you, you show an average kid pornography is mine. Automatically goes to sex. And <laughs> Toby Ziegler goes, you show a kid a... A, a, a love right. Right. And his mind goes to sex. Like, yep. You have these hormones developing in kids. They want to act sexually. They want to experience things. They want to establish their own Maybe independence. Maybe if they don't know if they want there's, to or not, somebody else is there telling it, them they want to. There, there are so many things going on. And you're going to deny them the education necessary to protect themselves? You think that just say, oh, just say no. Well, did that work with drugs? That no, that didn't work with drugs. Did that work? Is that working with sex? No, it's not. So you need to tell them this is how you protect yourself against STDs. This is, what, the, the this is how you protect me. yourself against pregnancy. My favorite quote about absence-only education comes from Beverly Hills 90210. And no, listen, because you're going to like it too. It was a PTA meeting about this very topic. And this, so Donna Martin, his mom, who's very, very strict, gets up and was talking about, you know, how absence is the only way. And it's the only way, it's the only way to send a clear message to our kid. We don't want to send in conflicting messages. Because that's always the argument. We're getting them conflicted messages if we say absence only. But if you do have sex, here's a condom. Um, so it's a conflicting message. And Donna Martin says, what if you have a swimming pool? And your kid can't swim. And you tell your kid not to get in the pool. And you build a wall around your pool. And you do everything you can to get keep your kid from that pool. If you think that your kid is somehow going to get into that pool, don't you think you ought to teach it how to swim? Boom. And I remember that. I know. Laugh me all you want to. It's not a 2 and 0. But it was so great. And that always stays with me. Like, Yes, you can. You it's not a conflicting message. You're saying don't get in the swimming pool. It's bad for you. You can't swim. You don't know what you're doing. You're too young. But because I'm afraid for you and because you're my child and I want to protect you, I'm going to teach you how to tread water just in case you find yourself in that pool. Um, we went through a lot. If you guys are listening, please just make a comment, even if it's something small like here, listening, like it, just so we know if we should continue or we know if there's anything you want to hear differently or if you have an issue. We would like your feedback, even if it's as small as we're listening and we like it or we don't like it for this reason, something. It would be really nice to have some type of comment or thumbs up if you like it or something just to keep us going. Yep. So until next time, I'm Jen. I'm Natalie. Drink up. Cheers. <laughs>